I remember the day that Princess Diana died for the reason that I was out the back welding a wheelbarrow onto a frame with a roll cage on it that I'd put bike steering on. And I must have been, I don't know, like really, really young then. But it, it just like grew and grew and grew. Like I'd spend every night in, in Stanford where I grew up in this tiny little freezing cold shed. It was so small. Maybe 10, 9, 10, I, I was welding and, and grinding and turning bike frames upside down and resetting them up to create downhill bikes and stuff. But I've always been a, a massive fan until now of bodging things. <laughs> uh, that's my uncle's that he's building. But we took two Prague carts, like uh, bought just the chassis and fully converted them, put wild cart. Uh, Brakes in the front and then just put on loads of bits, built our own dashboards with our own digital things. As I grew up a little more, as my mates started to get cars, it started to become cars, it started to become Goldmark 1 GTIs and uh, 205 GTIs and things like that. And it was the panel beating, the customising and the reshaping of things that I'd probably learned from being a kid that, you know, playing with these bits and bats and changing things had probably made me want to. I don't know, I just like things being unique and different. I'd sit for hours on my dodgy internet connection at home looking at uh, body kits and things like that, but looking how I could change them into my own thing. It was a shame though, because I could never, I could never have a car myself at that age. So we, we never had space for it. So I, I, I actually got a, a motocross bike and, and did that. If, if you go and start tinkering with a V8 as your first engine, you're gonna have an absolute mare and it's just not gonna happen. And, you're not going to understand what's going on and everything. You need to understand um, the, the carbs, the pistons, and, and how it fires and everything like that first. So I, I learned that from, from my motorbike engine, from taking it in bits and rebuilding it and, and stuff. But then it, it was when I, when I got to the age of like 16 and left school, after I'd been start sketching cars for years and stuff like that, that I wanted to take learning about the engine and learning about the mechanics of a car and how to do jobs and things like that. Uh, I wanted to take that further and I went and studied at Keithley College. And then this is mine, but I, as you can tell, I'm not here as much. <laughs> so mine's a little bit worse for wear at the moment. And I'm just literally getting it sat back into its frame. But I went through a dark point within cars where at the age of 16, I, a bit younger actually, on my motocross bike, I, I firstly, I basically got caught doing wheelies up and down the road on my motocross bike which I wasn't meant to be doing. And, 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 and it was annoying because I'd always been flying up and down lanes in, in scrap cars that, um, basically, I got my experience from driving from my, my friend's dad sadly passed away um, and his guardian that started looking after him lived at the end of the road with his scrapyard. My friend's dad owned the farm, so my friend got the farm. And we just started driving, driving, driving. I had an old scrap car Clio, and, and, and that's what we'd do. We'd drive around fields and country lanes and stuff. So when I got caught on my motorbike, going up and down the road outside my house, I, I was kind of going, well, what's the problem here? I, I don't understand what the problem is here. And uh, A, I, I was told the bike was going to be crushed if I didn't sell it within a certain amount of time. I got a pretty hefty fine for a kid. And I got six points when my license became active which made me go, well, I just won't make the license for come active, whatever. And, and, and at the same time, I'd, I'd, I'd already decided I wanted to get out of this town and go and do music as well. So it all kind of came into play at the same time. And then I think the thing that really put me off cars for a little while was that two of my best friends then died in a car accident. And that was a big gap of time that I didn't draw cars, I didn't do anything with cars because I was a little bit shook up by the whole thing and kind of put everything into my music instead, you know. There was a really, really crucial stage where I needed to get out of the small town I grew up in. And for the reason that I was, I was, I was becoming the weirdo that wanted to do something different, you know, the creative one. My brother thankfully made me go and do an audition at Leeds College of Music for my voice. I, I made sure that I went and did that audition and, and I passed and I got into Leeds College of Music and it was both socially an experience and, and professionally an experience and, and educationally an experience because Leeds, what Leeds and Leeds College of Music taught me is that I, I, was, I was accepted 
every there was suddenly from being one weirdo in a in a big in a small pond, I was part of many weirdos in a small pond <laughs> where, we, where there was loads of us all wanting to do music and that was pretty distracting. It took me away from the car thing, from the trauma of my friends um, and, and it was somewhere that I could put everything into. It was then when I moved to London I really got my head down and started collaborating with people and working with people and, and I put myself on the dole just so that I could work, 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 work. When I'm at home, like a lot of time in it, it clears the mind, it's good. But you should have seen them when they started off, they were both just two standard carts and now we've been in the process of fully extending them. The crazy thing is once you've got uh, your, your main uh, motorbike chassis back in and in position, it comes together really, really quickly. It was then that I met Rudimental and, and I started to feel slight changes in my career. I'd, I'd already had kind of interest from record labels. I'd had interest from my managers. The, the build was so slow, slow. And now when I sit there and people go, overnight success, you go, no, 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 no. From, from the point of being hitting Casio keyboards in an awful little studio in two today, I, I've, I've worked, 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 and, and it's been very slow for me. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my longevity that I've had so far already to be able to get to two albums after collaborating with all these people and stuff. So for a young lad coming into fame, um, it was a slow build and, and it's good because it's matured me, it's prepared me and yeah, it's been, it's been great. Like when I'm home, I, 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 I reckon I definitely lost my last relationship because of this shit. <laughs> I mean here, I, I could safely say that, right? Probably. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This was the reason I lost my last relationship, this motherfucker. <laughs> I was out in America making my new record. I was doing so much driving and, and uh, Black and White Car Rental did this in uh, 1956. Posh Speedster replica, and I was driving that through through LA, and just the feeling of that car. It was the first classic kind of older car that I'd driven since having my license again, and I was like, wow, I've missed the feeling of being able to feel each little step in the gearbox of of the clutch of of no traction control, no assisted braking. So I started looking at the options in the UK. I started looking at Posh Speedsters, I started looking at things like that, and then I was like, problem is with a Posh Speedster, it doesn't make me <clears throat> my pants. <laughs> so I was like, right, what will? And I, I started looking at V8 Cobra. I want to be seen as a guy that has a general addiction to cars and the smell of fuel. <laughs> and, and, and that's why I looked at uh, going to um, Absolute Horsepower, who custom built me the car. I designed it all myself from the ground up. Yeah, I'd, I'd love an original Cobra in, in its perfect original styling, but I, I, as, as from this whole interview, you can tell from, from seeing my career now, from designing my album logos to designing the clothes I wear to everything, I, I don't like any one thing to be the same as some, what somebody else has got. And that's why I wanted to build the Cobra like that. I wanted it just totally original, totally my own thing and just, a car that I loved for the look of it, for the drive of it, and everything. And, and I feel like I've got that. I've got a, 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 a big block Chevy LS3 engine. It's very, very clean running in comparison to the Ford, which is a bit spluttery in places, can misfire sometimes and harder to maintain. And, and I've got a car that I'm very proud of. And I think it's absolutely stunning. The, the front end is like a boat. <laughs> it's like you've got a boat stuck on the front of a, a normal car. It's so long and you're sat so far back, you're sat pretty much onto the back axle nearly. And, and the front end is one little jigger. It's kind of, you know, the, the whole front end is, is so sensitive, which throws the back end, which is so sensitive from, from the power in the engine. Once you run smoothly and when, it, when, when you're going at a, a, a normal speed, it's beautiful. It smells great. Feels great, sounds great. You don't realize how loud it is until you get out and you're like, oh God, <laughs> I need to start wearing earplugs on. I'm just a bit of chroming, a bit tidying up in places, and then keep hearing the word supercharger in from my own head. It's uh, a cool idea. <laughs> do whatever you want to do. You will be called the weirdo for sitting in your shed all day welding. 
when your mates are out drinking WKD and smoking and beating each other up. You not being there because you're sat in a shed, they might not understand that, but do it because that's what you enjoy. And if you enjoy sitting on the street drinking WKD and everything at a young age, do it because then you can get that out of your system. <laughs> so then you can sit in your shed for hours and hours and hours. And that's the same for studio as a musician. Do it, it doesn't matter, you're not the recluse, you've got music, you've got cars. You, it's, you will never be the recluse, you might come out of the studio in, in five years, like I did, a little bit like, hello, <laughs> but that's, that's every creative person that I know. Um, I don't know, just do what you do and enjoy it, and whether that be cars or music or whatever it is, don't ever feel like the weirdo, it just means you're talented. <laughs> Good news citizens, you can now follow John Newman on Car Throttle. Click the i in the top right corner now to view his profile, click follow and simply sign in with Facebook.